Hello, welcome back again. This is our last in our little series on sword and dagger. Um, we've so far looked at a lot on how we actually use the, the, the sword and the dagger together um, and trying to make them almost act as one weapon um, and the advantages that having a dagger gives us over having just the sword. What we haven't really looked at is what we do if our opponent also has a weapon. So um, it has two weapons even. So, if uh, Michael here also has a dagger, I now can't just assume that if Michael comes in for a lovely pendente in towards my head, and that if I put a double parry up here, that I am nice and safe, because we all know there's nothing to stop him ramming the dagger into my chest at this point. So I need to actually start thinking about how do I fight somebody that has two weapons. It's all very well going, yes, it's lovely, and I can hide behind these and do great things. I need to also start thinking about how I'm going to defend myself and how I'm going to attack around somebody who also has that same advantage. So I really want to look at three concepts. The first of them is that we really need to get to the point where the sword and the dagger are being used at the same time. Because what tends to happen when people start doing this is, um, so we'll start in there, come on, don't be mindful of your If Michael attacks, what will happen is all of his attention is currently on his sword. And all of my attention goes to my dagger as I tap. And then I go, oh crap, I was meant to do something. So now all of my focus switches to my sword and I attack, giving him all the time in the world to put his focus into his dagger and defend, and we're back to where we started. So this has to change that I need to be able to do those things simultaneously so that when the attack comes in, boom, I'm not giving him time to shift his focus and have it all on one weapon at a time. But in order to do that, I need to learn for this to become a bit automated, yeah? In the same way, when you start driving, every time you change the gear stick, sorry, any Americans watching this? Any time you change the gear stick, um, you can't have your attention solely focused up with what you're doing, you still need to steer, right? So it's the same kind of thing. I need to get used to when that comes in, not really thinking so much about the dagger, that I'm able and free to attack with the sword. So that's the first thing, is I need to get these simultaneous. If I just go defend, then attack, then the other person will defend and then attack, and we're not really gaining anything by having two weapons. So that's the first thing I'm gonna do when fighting somebody with two weapons, I really need to get simultaneous with my attack and defend. The second thing is I need to stop doing single attacks, like single intention attacks. And you'll find that the minute you're trying to do two things already, your brain won't allow you to get complicated with your attack. But if an attack comes in, and I go like, this. it's very easy for my opponent to defend, because I haven't done anything other than thrown the sword at them. Yeah? So I need to start, once I've got the hang of doing them together, is making second intention attacks off my parry. So what I'm going to start doing is when the attack comes in, yeah, coming in with an attack to raise the dagger, dropping the point under, coming in with a stoccata into the flank there. I mean, that's just an example, that was a fade, it was a, a, a nice easy one that I went for there. You know, there's any number of variations. Attack comes in, I can cut up here, forcing my opponent to parry low, yeah, bring it over, and get a false rotondo through the head. There's any number of things I can do, but until I start getting used to this idea of second intention attacks along with my parry, I'm not going to be able to get past the dagger. Because it's there, I'm assuming it's going to capture first intention attack. So I need to be doing second intention attack. Now we know loads of these. It's hard to beat a dagger, so probably wouldn't bother. This is mostly going to be the rounds of fades. Um, but there's loads of them. Attack comes in, I'm going to come across here. Dagger comes across, disengage underneath, finish the cutter. But I have to be prepared to get those second intention attacks going along with the dagger. So there's your first two. The third one that I'm going to cover for now is I need to change the dynamic. If we keep this very linear, neither of us has an advantage based on measure because we've both got two weapons and we're both on our centre line. If, however, say um, uh, an attack comes in, if I can step off line here, I have changed that dynamic. I now have two weapons versus his one because his dagger is now out of play. Now that's not going to last long because all he has to do is step back to square with me again, and we're now back where we were. So I need to get used to starting to uh, to take advantage of that, which means using the dagger occasionally. Things so I might be looking at an attack coming in. I'm going to step across to take the dagger here, 
freeing up that moment to attack down here when I have two weapons against his one, because he can't bring his dagger in to stop that attack coming through. Yeah, or either I might come under even better, come under with the foot of reverse. However, I'm planning to do that. But if I can get on that side, now what that also means is that's where I want to be circling to when I'm doing my plan. Now I don't want to circle towards the dagger side. No, no, sorry, sorry, just there. So if I circle towards the dagger side, the dagger's still in play to hold the sword longer. It's also still in play. So I need to circle to the sword side. So one of the standard ways I'll certainly do this is if I add a little strum up only, I can put myself on this position here where you now have to adjust your footing in order to square up with me again. And whilst you're moving, that's my opportunity to strike as you're recovering to that ground. So I'm going to use this idea of wherever possible, if I have a choice, I want to circle towards their sword side to try and get that advantage. And it can be as simple, I don't have to do anything cunning, I can just move. Boom, forces you to move and opens up that line. Um, or, as I said, I can start doing things where I come in and start pressing against the blade, which means you instantly then probably want to disengage. Yeah. To bring the point online, which is great, because that leads me into a guard of oh, the a invitation into a second intention attack. So what I'm saying is you need to stop being able to use all these second intention attacks as part of your fighting. So simultaneous, second intention, and as much as possible working around towards your opponent's on side will give you the best advantage of using the sword and dagger. Now that sounds easy, but there is a lot of practice and a lot of headwork into making that work. But once you've got it, you'll find that you're actually able to fight against somebody with two weapons we're looking at the sword and dagger, this all equally applies to any other weapon they might have, um, you'll gain that kind of advantage. So hopefully you found this useful, it's given you a bit of an insight into how um, we do sword and dagger here from the Dalgokie works, um, and you'll probably see that run through as we do videos in the future concerning some of the other offhand weapons. Um, but hopefully something you can take home, have a bit of play with, some food for thoughts, and hopefully you found it useful. So until next time, take care.